Hey everybody, welcome back to the uh, Katacha Labs Chapter 1 tutorial. Uh, last time we did the uh, the first five chambers, and uh, in this episode we're going to be doing chambers 6 through 10. Yeah. Alright, so I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back. Uh, let's get right into it. So, Labyrinth is an interesting chamber in the sense that it's a standard maze chamber with a twist. What is that twist? We will get to that. So you want to grab the lever and then you want to once you've got the lever you're basically done in that part of the maze you want to go around the outside to get over here around the back and you might notice there's another entrance to this part of the maze that you couldn't get to earlier uh, when you go over here you can actually climb up on top of the maze and that allows you to do a little parkour over here and that allows you to bypass the maze and get in here uh, and at this point you might be wondering why is there so many leaf blocks what is what is up with the leaf blocks well when you get over here yeah your Katacho weed whacker your number one hedge tripper since 1997 this allows you to break leaves which is just super satisfying um, and that allows us to get items that we couldn't get to before so you want to just break this to reveal the slime blocks underneath so that when we come up here you could jump back over here and we get back to the main maze part of the chamber which allows us to uh, destroy bits of the maze to find secrets like a slime ball and then over here in the wall there's a lever we couldn't get to those before and that allows us to open this door that's over here so break the leap blocks. This is a, a mini maze inside of a much larger maze, basically. Uh, make sure to grab this lever over here. And break this. But this time, before we go up, you want to break a bit of that. <laughs> so climb on up, jump across. This chamber is pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, the only reason why the uh, the weed whacker, the shears, are in this uh, map is because they were in the old map. Because this is a reboot of an old map that we made back in 2015. I don't know why I decided to make shears a mechanic in that map, but it was it was I, it was just in my opinion iconic. It was one of the, it was this and the wrench that were like the uh, the two uh, the two items that you got to use. So I was like, ah, I got I got to bring the, the 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 weed whacker back. How do you make a puzzle around that? I don't know. I tried. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. Now we move on to the chamber that I feel like a lot of you watching is probably wanting like, okay, let me let me get my words together. I feel like most of you people watching right now came to this video specifically for this chamber. I don't blame you. Redstone is something that not everyone gets. So we have the uh, the Katacho uh, electrical wrench. It has a tendency to shock violently. It really doesn't. It's just a little joke. Um, so the right wing of the chamber is the easier one. You got to do both wings eventually. But I like to uh, get people to do this side first. So you just want the redstone to hit that block to open the door. Make sure to flick this lever so that the door stays permanently open. So you can come back and grab your redstone. And this is when I have tried my best to design a chamber that tries to teach players how redstone works with a lot of trial and error. This room basically teaches the player that there's a mechanic called uh, a redstone loop um, or a clock. It's one of the two. Basically, when you have redstone and repeaters going in an infinite like circle like this, that's infinitely powered. So picture the redstone is like traveling through the wire and if it's going into a circle it's constantly powered which allows us to break it from the source so just picture that the redstone came from the torch and started moving through this in a circle and because it's infinitely moving in a circle we can break the source because it's still moving and then we can redirect it into that block i hope that makes sense um so the rest of this side of the chamber is basically putting that to the test by making like a repeater maze so you want to make sure that you make a circle which we have right here which allows us to break these two now you might think 
that this is a circle, but it's not. Because if you follow the redstone, it goes here, but then this repeater's facing this way. So the redstone can't travel through this one. Instead, it gets blocked. So if I was to break this, it would cancel the entire circle. So what you have to do instead, is you gotta put a redstone there because this here is a loop, which allows us to break these two. And then we can put the three here, which opens the door. Once again, I hope this makes sense. <laughs> I know redstone is not for everyone. It's something that I, I myself even have trouble understanding. Um, I I had someone else teach me how this mechanic works, and ever since then, I made a puzzle around it. Um, it's definitely a different style puzzle. Uh, compared to the rest of the map where this one's a lot more slower paced you actually have to like concentrate and think logically um, so some people like that I know some people are, are not gonna like this and if you don't like this style of puzzles that's fine um, I know I'm kind of skimming through this but basically you just want to make circles out of the repeaters I uh, just be very careful uh, and double check and make sure that you have a oh and make sure you have an actual loop because if you don't you're gonna have to go all the way back <laughs> and do it over again uh, it's a punishment for not understanding it at this point um, so we got a slime ball pick up the redstone and now we get to go to the harder part of the chamber which I feel like the majority of you are wanting to see because I noticed some people on uh, came out and reached to me saying that they think this chambers broken or something's missing Trust me, it's not. Um, we have extensively beta tested this map. Nothing's broken. You don't need to worry. Um, but it is trickier. This chamber essentially teaches you that you can make a loop with only one repeater. You don't need four repeaters to make a circle. If the redstone is wired like this, picture it as going through the repeater and then back around and then through the single repeater. That allows you to break these two and you could still have a charge. So basically you power this one so that the redstone is now going like this way. So you could break these two, move it onto the other side, connect it to this repeater. So you could turn this repeater off and then you can use that three redstone to open that. And then that allows you to pick your redstone back up. So once again, I hope this makes sense. I'm doing my best. I'm trying my best to describe this, so I apologize if no one gets it. So this next chamber introduces this. This is a repeater lock. And what this means is that if a repeater is powered and in going into the side of another repeater, it locks it, which prevents it from, from it prevents redstone from traveling through it. Think of this as a wall. Um, that blocks the redstone from going through. So in order to do this chamber, what you need to do is you actually need to power this, and then you're like, oh, but that doesn't work. However, if you power, if you lock the repeater while it's active, you notice that this torch is lit on the other side of the wall. That means the redstone is basically trapped on this side of the wall which means you can actually remove the redstone going into it as the redstone's trapped on this side. So you can break that and actually use the three redstone to hit that, that block which opens the door. So hopefully you guys, once again, I keep saying this a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry if it gets annoying. Uh, I, hope, I hope that explains it because now uh, the following two rooms put that understanding to the test. With this one, uh, you need to, you need to get this repeater lit up, but you can't do that if this repeater here is powered because it's going into it. So what you need to do instead is first lock this repeater and then power this. And now in order to, to uh, now we need to lock this one. So we need to turn that one back on and we simply do that by removing the lock by breaking this one. Now that repeater is locked. And then that allows us to pick up all of these because the redstone is going through here and is trapped here. But you still might notice we still don't have enough redstone. But that's okay because all we need to do now is lock this repeater again by simply putting redstone there. And that allows us to break these two. So it's a little bit more complex. But there we have it. 
And then this one, it gets a little bit trickier because there's a way to go about this that makes you think that you solved it. This is a piston, um, and you can't simply put the redstone into the piston because it turns into here. So what we want to do is actually we want to have this repeater locked. It's kind of like the one before. You want to have this repeater locked so that the redstone goes here. And then you want to simply remove this power so that uh, this repeater locks this, uh, this repeater. And since that's locked, we can put a redstone piece there, which uh, pushes up the piston. And you think that we'd be done, but you actually need to bring four redstone up here. But with the way that we have this set up, you can actually remove three redstone here, put a redstone here to lock that repeater again, and then break these two. And that's how you go about uh, opening this door. We could ditch the slime or the redstone because we don't need the redstone to open the exit, and we just need two slime balls to uh, open the exit. Yeah. Uh, once again, if uh, you guys have trouble keeping up, feel free to rewind the video, pause it, look at the uh, setups that I have. That helps. Um. So yeah. That's the redstone puzzle. That's why I feel like most of you came to this video to see. Uh, so moving on <laughs> after the redstone puzzle uh, chamber 8 I wanted to make it a little bit more fun a little bit less um, a little bit easier on the brain so this introduces jump boost uh, the effect plate is what we call them you step on them it gives you jump boost for five seconds it's jump boost five and that allows you to get up here and then you just simply throw the sign ball through the through the glass to make it land on the pressure plate come back down do that again um, it's something yeah something you want to do is before you go down there jump up here grab the lever you can do that later but it's best to do it now so use the weed whacker to break the leaves and those two uh, plates open this door this is just a friendly uh, reminder that uh, different effect plates have different strengths and duration. Always make sure to uh, press E to look at it. As you can see, this one's jump boost 7, whereas the other one was jump boost 5. So this one actually allows us to jump a bit higher than normal. So we can actually run all the way over here, and we got a slide ball. Now with the lever that we got, we, can, we open that door, and you actually can't jump and reach that. So what we need to do is that we need to jump with the jump boost. But something most people might notice is that when you jump with the jump boost at the very edge, it doesn't last. So what you need to do is you need to jump a little bit earlier before you reach the ledge. Um, my advice is to jump as soon as you're between those two pillars. Jump and you should hold forward and you should be good. Yeah. So the exit is actually up in that little alcove there. Um, and you actually need this jump boost in order to reach it because the other jump boost isn't as high. So use the jump boost to get up and basically some simple parkour um, around the edge of this uh, this uh, vertical shaft part of the chamber. And that's the exit. Pretty cool. Now the next chamber is a bit of a underwater maze exploration. Uh, there's a friendly hint to not drown. I hope that helps. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna try to go through this in the most optimal route. I believe the quickest way to do this chamber is to actually go up here and grab this lever first. There's four levers. Um, and this is a very non-linear chamber because you can tackle any lever in any order. I think the next lever that we could do is actually down here, which allows us to take a little scenic tour through this chamber. I want to make this chamber look a bit more unique, a, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing uh, compared to the others, because at this point you've been looking at a bunch of just, oh look at that, there's a secret painting of a secret game. Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, at this point you've been seeing a lot of just empty white rooms in this map. So this is just to kind of stimulate your eyes and give you something new to look at. Um, so to get up onto this like tree stump thing, 
Um, you can jump from up there. That's what I prefer to do. It's quicker. Or you could just simply swim and get up here. And when I say it's quicker, I mean the overall scheme of the chamber. The optimal route. So use the shears to get down here. Run across, and then you might notice that we swam through there. Now we're up here in this glass tube. Um, so you want to come down. Go up. Uh, this sign means to go left first and then right. Because if you go right, you're going to... Uh, you're going to be taken straight back to the entrance of the chamber. Because <laughs> I like to be a little evil sometimes when making maps. Not too evil, but a little bit evil. Um, if you're wondering how I was able to go down the bubble, uh, basically when you're swimming, just hold shift and, uh, uh, and, uh, just go down. And when I say shift, I mean your, uh, your sneak button, whatever you have it mapped to. Look down, swim forward, hold your sneak button, and you'll be able to, uh, go through the bubbles pretty easily. So... We go up here. We're back at the start, but that's okay. We just swim back around. This probably wasn't the most optimal way, actually. Should have done this lever last. Because the exit is actually up that central uh, pillar in through there. So, that would have actually been good to do last. Instead, what we want to do is we want to come over here and use the bubbles from this vent to push ourselves up onto this platform. And then this sign basically says to hold space and look up to fight the whirlpools. Basically, these vents pull you down. It's actually retextured magma blocks. Uh, look up, swim, hold space. You should be good. That gives us a slime ball, which needs to be used on the other side. So you might notice, how do we get over there? Well, there's like a metal tube. Which goes over that way. And we actually need to swim through that tube. And in order to do that, we need to go over to this side of the chamber. So find the find these bubbles here. Let's push you up, and then this allows you to come over here. Uh, this sign basically teaches you uh, sneak while swimming. So basically, like I mentioned before, hold down the uh, sneak button, swim, uh, and you should be good to fight the bubbles pushing you back up. So we're swimming through the tube, which pushes us up here, and now we're on the other side of the glass with our slime ball, which allows us to. Uh, slide it onto that plate open this door and we have the last lever so now all we have to do is go place it on the exit which is all the way back at the start like i said i should have gotten the uh the lever through the tree stump last but it doesn't really matter you can do this in any order you want i like to keep some chambers open uh most of the chambers are linear, but I like to throw a non-linear one in every now and then. Just I feel like giving the player choice is something that's uh, pretty fun. Players like having choice. So, now we move on to Chamber 10. Chamber 10 is a big one. This is when I feel like the map really starts opening up and the chambers start getting a lot longer and more intricate. So the first thing you want to do in this chamber is actually at the very start of the chamber. You want to use the wrench to break this redstone, which opens the door and gives you a lever. Now, where does that lever, where is this lever used, you might be asking. Well, it's actually across here. And you want to use the shears to kind of carve a, a little parkour path up onto this uh, pillar. Put the lever here, and that actually opens this door. Which allows us to place down a redstone here. Which allows us to pick up four to get five. So the whole gimmick of this chamber is basically just getting a bunch of redstone. And getting more pieces over time. Allowing you to uh, interact with more and more things throughout the chamber. So now that we have five redstone, you want to use that to open this door to get a slime ball. Then you want to take the slime ball jump across here I messed that up completely use it to jump across here and place it on this pad over here which if you follow the arrows it will open a door on the other side of the chamber so we come back around and we want to place the five redstone here which causes a bridge to open 
and we can get through this door to grab a single piece of redstone. So this allows us to have six. And with six redstone, you can do this part of the repeater puzzle uh, by simply doing this. Uh, you can't do that part. We actually need eight. This is seven. This is our seventh redstone. That's what I mean to say. And with the seventh redstone, you actually might notice there's a little, uh, a little tiny room in there, kind of hidden, tucked away. And I messed that up completely. God. Okay. Got us trog our way. Is trog a word? I don't know. I'm gonna uh, trog is now a word. <laughs> We're gonna trog our way through the sludge pit. Is what I like to call that. Um, because I refer to the sticky stuff as uh the Katacho Laboratories high tech adhesion sludge. Um, so with the seven redstone, you can do that, which allows you to get your eighth. And with eight redstone, that allows us to do multiple things. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is you want to get back up there. We need to get our slime ball back. All right, so come up here, jump, hit the slime. And now that we have eight redstone, we could do the full part of this puzzle. By simply putting four there, then breaking these four. And then going one, two, three, four to go into that room. But before we go into that room, you want to pick up your slime ball. And here's like a little setup that I'm a little too proud of <laughs> for my own good. Uh, simply put, uh, this door is open, that door is closed, and when you step on the plate, that door opens, but that one closes. So how do we be on the other side of that door to get into that door while this is pressed? Well, look at this. There's a sticky wall. Basically, come on up, throw the slime ball on the sludge, and run through the door, and watch it slowly fall down onto the plate. And that allows us to get a second slime ball. Wow. Pick it up. And there's that little graphical bug. If you see your slime ball disappear, uh, just try to go to where it was, and you'll probably pick it up again. That's a little graphical glitch on Minecraft's end. I don't think that's something that we could fix. It's uh, something that's been a problem with Minecraft for a while now, as far as I'm aware. I've been making maps since 2011, and disappearing slime balls have been something I've noticed over the past, like, five-ish years. Anywho put two slime balls there to break the glass that's a one-time thing so you can pick them back up then we want to use the eight redstone to make a line go into this piston stand on the piston before placing the final one that allows you to go on up and we have access to the jump boost we can use the jump boost to come up here and run up to get a lever and now that we're up here we can finally see the exit <laughs> all that work and now you can just now finally see the exit we need three slime balls and we need a total of 10 redstone to get up to the exit door pretty pretty crazy stuff so what we need to do is we need to grab the the jump boost let's see if I can do this quick enough jump up here where we broke the glass break more glass with that lever and before we grab that chest uh, speed run strat jump up and then you can grab this chest while you fall down so you now we have two additional redstone that's so we went from eight to ten and we have two slime balls so we need ten redstone to open the or to get to the exit but we need three slime balls to open the exit and we only have two so where's the third one third one's actually over there so what we need to do uh, and if you might notice we need all ten redstone over there to get through that door well how do we get the redstone over there if we needed to get up to the jump boost so what you need to do is you need to grab the jump boost drop down collect all of your redstone jump back up here to grab a second dose of jump boost which will allow you to run down here i'd say about here jump use the slime to bounce your way up here and now with the 10 redstone we can open this door which allows us to get our third slime ball and now we finally have everything needed to open the exit and get to the exit. So once again, just place your redstone down, stay on this, go on up, grab the jump boost, 
come on down and collect your redstone again. Jump back up. Grab more jump boost to get up here. Okay, no, I messed that up completely. Okay, come on. Get up there. And now we have the three slime balls to open this. This door. All right. And with the 10 redstone in hand, we can now use the piston to get up. And we're through the exit. And that is how you do chambers 6 through 10. Uh, as you can see, these later chambers, they're starting to get a little bit longer. Uh, and boy, oh boy, do they really start getting long in the last five. So uh, the link to the next five chambers will be in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you, uh, hope you learned something. I hope I was able to help some of you out there. And I hope you're enjoying the map. So uh, if you uh, want to know how to uh, do the chambers going forward, feel free to watch the next part. Uh, I've been Stockley from Team Silica. Thank you for playing my map. And until next time, I will see you guys then. Goodbye.